Hi, so yeah, my name's Sean Bow. I'm an engineer at the Zcash company. Uh, Christian just did a really great job explaining uh, how zero knowledge proofs work and how ZK snarks work. Um, my, the focus of this talk is gonna be on making ZK snarks work in production software. So obviously at Zcash, we brought ZK snarks into production uh, last year and it was uh, very expensive to do that and that's why we're probably the only people that have done that since then. Um, and you know, part of that is because it took a lot of engineering resources to do it, and it also took uh, a lot of auditing. A lot of things can go wrong, and the trusted setup, obviously, is, is the biggest thing that I think holds back uh, ZK Snarks from being deployed in, in more software uh, uh, broadly. So uh, what are the challenges of bringing ZK Snarks into production? So I think the, there's four things that, that people really uh, kind of stress or, or the reasons why they can't use ZK Snarks in production. Uh, usually has to do with uh, curve security, uh, performance, the trusted setup, and I guess circuit design as well. So uh, curve security, uh, I'll go into. So there's an elliptic curve, obviously this pairing friendly elliptic curve that uh, was implemented in Zcash. It was designed by our scientists at Zcash and it was just implemented in Ethereum. And uh, it's a pairing friendly elliptic curve that originally targeted 128-bit security. However, uh, due to some optimizations uh, to the number field C algorithm, uh, this has weakened a little bit. It's about 110 bits now. So um, we're designing a new curve, which is uh, targeting closer to 128-bit security. We're gonna move to this in, in the next version of Zcash. Um, it's designed to target the security level without really uh, losing the performance that we had before as much as we possibly could. Uh, so this uh, new curve is, is very rigid compared to the old curve. Um, it's been reviewed a lot, it's been optimized a lot. It's been implemented twice. I implemented it in Rust uh, in a library called Pairing and it's a pretty stable implementation. Uh, Diego Arana has also implemented it in Relic. So uh, this curve is, is, is being a pairing friendly curve is what we build ZK Snarks on top of. So um, now, now the performance improvements. Uh, so there are three different things that we're doing at Zcash uh, to improve ZK Snark performance. So one of them is using a different proving scheme. So the one that um, uh, Christian was just talking about, which uses eight group, group elements, uh, there's newer ones that use less group elements than that. Um, so we, we want to consider those. Also, there's these techniques and optimizations. One of them, uh, which I won't go into in too much detail, is called streamed proving, where um, the common reference string or the public parameters of the ZK snarks uh, are loaded from disk as the, uh, as the computation is being performed when you're constructing a proof. So uh, that, that has led to uh, like 100 times less memory usage during proving. So it's one of the things that uh, ZK snarks, their reputation for using a bunch of memory and taking forever, uh, we're hoping to, uh, to, to eliminate that. The last thing uh, th that improves uh, on performance is this new jub-jub curve, which I'll go into in a second. So as far as proving systems are concerned, there are, uh, th th the best one is probably Jens Groth's new 2016 pairing-based snark. And uh, this, this has three group elements. And after this snark was uh, published in last year, it, uh, a couple papers followed uh, subversion resistant snarks. So this is where the common reference string is, is uh, you know, modified by the, by the person who created it to violate zero knowledge. And also snarky signatures, uh, which are simulation extractable, non-malleable ZK snark proofs. So what we're gonna do in Zcash and uh, kind of the, the path we're taking forward is we're gonna look at uh, the original Groth construction. Uh, but uh, obviously we want to prevent malleability and we want to reduce the, uh, reduce the assumptions. So we have a, a clear path forward for that. Uh, and Ariel Gavazon, Jens Groth, and, and Mary Mallard are actually working on that uh, right now. So Groth's original scheme is really efficient, so that's kind of why we, we want to embrace that. Um, so this jub-jub curve, uh, weird name, but it's a twisted Edwards curve, it's a special uh, curve that's designed specifically to work for BLS 12 381. Uh, it's optimized, we, we've come up with all sorts of tricks and optimizations that make it really efficient to uh, reason about this curve inside of ZK Stark, or ZK Snark um, um, arithmetic circuits. And so uh, we've reviewed it and optimized it and, and, and everything, it's, it's quite a nice curve. 
the reason why you would need an embedded elliptic curve inside of your arithmetic circuits is because you can build a lot of uh, you know efficient cryptographic primitives, collision resistant hashes and commitment schemes and signature systems and all sorts of things like that. So that allows us to replace the, uh, you know, we currently use inside of Zcash, we use SHA-256 for everything. Um, and we, you can use it for quite a few different things, but it's not very efficient to do inside of arithmetic circuits being a, a purely Boolean uh, function. So these, these new uh, cryptographic primitives that are based on these elliptic curves that are embedded inside the ZK-SNARK arithmetic circuit are uh, a lot more efficient because they're entirely algebraic primitives. So this, uh, this new curve, we've implemented it and prototyped it and, and it building software like Zcash and building arithmetic circuits like Zcash, uh, we end up with significantly better performance, um, almost five to 10 times better. And there's more optimizations that I'd like to talk about, but I can't because they're part of uh, ongoing papers. So now the, the biggest thing that gets people to not really be interested in ZK snarks is the trusted setup. So when you, um, you know, uh, we have Starks on the horizon which are trustless and quantum resistant and so on, but uh, for now the proofs are still gonna be quite large and not easy to compose together. And so um, we're gonna have to deal with snarks probably for a long time, or at least until, you know, quantum computers destroy everything. So uh, Zcash is going to uh, have to do more of these trusted setups and uh, other projects in the community, anyone who wants to use ZK snarks uh, is going to have to do their own trusted setup. Um, because for any given statement, you need to reduce it into this common reference string. Um, so we have a new paper that makes this trusted setup a lot easier, which uh, I'll talk about soon. So uh, you can create the public parameters or the, the common reference string for ZK snark schemes uh, with a multi-party computation. And this is what we did last year uh, for Zcash. We performed a multi-party computation where we had six people that got together and the property of this MPC is that only one of the participants needs to be honest. So you would have to compromise every single one of the participants to compromise the final parameters. What does compromising the final parameters mean? Well, it means that you can probably uh, 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 con construct false proofs. You can't necessarily uh, violate zero knowledge as long as you verify the transcript and so on, but uh, it, it's definitely something that we don't want because in Zcash, for example, that would allow someone to uh, counterfeit unlimited amounts of money. So this is something that really bugs people, um, obviously. So now you can imagine that if you add more participants than six, then in maybe like a hundred or a thousand, it would be way harder to compromise everyone. It would be way harder for them all to be colluding in secret. But of course in the Zcash ceremony, we didn't do that. We had six people and there's a reason why. So it's very expensive to perform this uh, multi-party computation as you add more participants, both logistically and also cryptographically. So this is how the old MPC worked. Uh, we, we had six people and there's this uh, server in the middle that's the coordinator. Um, this coordinator is kind of on a beefy, beefy server and it has to perform some computations. So what the coordinator does is uh, we, you know, we start this uh, MPC, there's a commitment round. So every single participant needs to commit to their, what we call the toxic waste, but what is really just their randomness that they have to end up destroying at the end. They commit to this in advance and then the protocol begins. So we, there's a, this round robin computation where uh, the coordinator sends about a gigabyte file to, to Andrew in this case. And then uh, Andrew performs a computation that takes about 45 minutes or so and then sends back the result. And then the result uh, is you know another gigabyte. And then this is sent back to Derek. That's another gigabyte, another 45 minutes. And, th and you have to bridge air gaps and you have to do all these logistical synchronizations that are very difficult. And this just continues on throughout the entire uh, entirety of, of all the participants. Then there's a fast Fourier transform, a very expensive fast Fourier transform. Uh, we had a really beefy server and it still took an hour to perform, or two of them. So uh, once, once that's done, then you do this round robin thing again and then you actually do it again uh, so it becomes extremely difficult to, to, to manage this as time goes on. So the disadvantage is obviously it can't scale to a large number of participants. Uh, a participant can't abort in this. And if, if a participant aborts, it breaks the whole protocol. So you have to start over entirely. Um, as a result of the fact that uh, you know, uh, it can't scale, participants can't really take the risk to do uh, you know, their own countermeasures and different operating systems, different hardware. 
uh, things like that. So they have to you know, use the software we give them and so on. So that, that kind of sucks as well. Um, coordinating all this is very difficult. Everyone has to have a, a ton of time you know, planned out in advance. We, have to, we had did it over a weekend that everyone was free uh, shortly before we launched Zcash, but uh, it, it is unfortunate. So we need to do something better than this. Um, and so we've designed this new multi-party computation protocol. Uh, it's, we just published it this week on ePrint. Um, it eliminates this commitment round. And the point of that, obviously, is that you can have as many participants as you want. And uh, because participants obviously need to maintain custody of their hardware throughout the, their participation in the ceremony, um, this is a lot easier to do if they don't have to commit to it and then uh, exist throughout the entire ceremony. They can just jump in, participate, and then leave instantly. So this massively reduces the surface area of attacks and also uh, helps uh, scale the, the protocol. So uh, what's really awesome is that uh, uh, Per circuit computations for the multi-party computation are really, really small, and I can explain why. So we have these two phases in our protocol. There's this first phase called the powers of tau, where there's this communal ceremony that takes place that's agnostic to the actual uh, circuit that you're trying to construct ZK snarks for. So it works for all ZK snark circuits. So this is a communal uh, ceremony that benefits everybody, and it can be a, an extremely large one, but it can scale to you know hundreds of thousands of participants. It's much more expensive than the phase two, but because it's agnostic, uh, we can perform it once and everyone can uh, uh, leverage the results. Then there's a phase two. So in your concrete application, so for example in Zcash, but Filecoin or whatever other ZK Snark application wants to, uh, or whatever other applications want to use ZK Snarks, they have to perform this uh, phase two computation. However, if they leverage the result of the phase one, their particular multi-party computation, again, can scale to hundreds or thousands of participants. Um, and, and this is really awesome. It's also very cheap. You don't have to perform these expensive fast Fourier transforms and, and so on. And uh, you know, all, the, all the benefits that, that come with this protocol include you know, participants don't need to maintain custody of their hardware throughout the entire ceremony. So it's a lot simpler. Um, so this Powers of Tau ceremony, we're planning to have the Zcash Foundation host or um, you know, facilitate the execution of this, of this ceremony. Uh, the way it behaves, uh, basically everyone can publicly verify that everything took place just as we describe it. There's a public transcript that's verifiable. We give out a tool and everyone can check to make sure it all worked correctly. So there's no central point of failure here. Um, so yeah, again, it, it benefits everyone because everyone's MPCs can be sped up significantly. So uh, a as a summary, yes, most of the ZK snarks, uh, most of the problems with ZK snarks that people point out today uh, are being addressed. So performance, we've made massive reductions in proving time and in proving memory. Uh, curb security, we're bumping security margins up without compromising performance very much. And uh, obviously this trusted setup. I think that uh, we can, with this new uh, multi-party computation protocol and with having so many participants, again, with you only need one participant to be honest. So as this grows to hundreds and thousands of people, there's no way that uh, everyone could, be, could have been compromised. It becomes unrealistic. So th that, I, I think, helps make the, the, the case that trusted setups are, are reliable, at least for now. So uh, there are some things that uh, people, I, I've been working on this new library called Bellman, which is a Rust library for constructing ZK snarks. It has an implementation of all this stuff, like stream proving and uh, the, gr the Groth protocol and so on. It's kind of an alternative to libsnark. It uses the BLS12381 curve, and we're actually gonna build Zcash on top of this Bellman library. However, um, I really think that a lot of work needs to be done on DSLs for constructing arithmetic circuits. Right now, I don't think anyone's really come up with a, a perfect mixture of high level and abstraction and so on. Uh, but you know, work by Jacob and other people uh, is very exciting in that area. So uh, that's it, I'm happy to entertain any questions. Thank you.